Well, some residents of Shanghai have been allowed out of their homes as the city of 25 million eases a two-week shutdown. This comes after a video posted online showed what was said to be people who ran out of food breaking into a supermarket. The online news outlet, The Paper, said about 6.6 .6 million people will be allowed to go outdoors. The government said some markets and pharmacies would reopen. However, a health official warned that Shanghai doesn't have the virus under control despite easing restrictions. China's zero COVID policy is among the strictest approaches to dealing with the pandemic in the world. But with us to discuss China's zero COVID policy is Dr. Charles Burton, an expert on China affairs. Dr. Burton, welcome to Forum Daily. It's good to speak with you. So firstly, let's begin with this. What is China's zero COVID approach? Well, essentially, if there is even a single case, whether it's symptomatic or asymptomatic, the person and their contacts are isolated. And this is not a quarantine re requiring that you stay home, but uh, people are sent to specific, specially constructed quarantine facilities until such time as um, you know the risk of transmission is removed. And so we've seen in the earlier phases, you know, some fairly frightening stuff of children who have tested positive being removed to um, hospital facilities away from their parents. They seem to have eased down on, on that policy a bit. But uh, in general, uh, anyone who has any form of positive test is isolated. And, um, you know, recently, uh, Shanghai has been maintaining, um, essentially imprisoning uh, most of the 26 million people in Shanghai in their apartments. Initially, it was for a four-day period, and then expanded. And as your report indicated, people started to run short of food. The services for delivering food were inefficient. And any number of other um, serious issues with being essentially locked into your apartment, such as people who had... Um, uh, prescription medicines were not able to renew the prescriptions and people whose close family members had become uh, near death or died while in isolation were not able to go and see them and attend to their final rights. So it's been a very um, troubling situation in Shanghai causing a great deal of public discontent and uh, in addition it's causing a, a ripple effect in other cities in China as they are afraid that the central government will impose the same extremely restrictive policies you're seeing pa panic buying all over the country. Uh, you mentioned panic buying in addition to you, the human the human cost of this so what are the economic repercussions that are resulting from this policy in particular in China? Well, I mean, it has had a, an enormously disruptive effect on supply chains because so many people are unable to, to get to work. And so we're expecting to see a, a decline in Chinese GDP as a result of this. And, you know, Shanghai is China's economic center and uh, there's a lot of industrial activity that goes on there. So closing down the city of 26 million has a huge impact on the Chinese economy and exports as well. And I don't see any end to this, largely because the Chinese vaccines are not as effective as our vaccines. They haven't developed the mRNA vaccines. And the Chinese government, I think out of nationalist pride, even though they could well afford to do so, have not been importing the more effective vaccines. So this policy is, is partially a function of the ineffectiveness of the Chinese vaccines. So you mentioned an ineffective approach here, but why are officials in China sticking with the zero COVID approach? Well, it becomes very difficult to uh, to turn it around once it's got the the uh, approval of the senior leader, Party General Secretary Xi Jinping, and um, you know because of the lack of of medical facilities in Shanghai to deal with large numbers of people needing ICU care this policy seems to be their best option. In other words, just not allowing people to contact each other. But with the very virulent strains of COVID that we're seeing now, it's becoming harder and harder for even these extremely restrictive policies to, to tame the disease. So even though you only have in a city of 26 million reported something like, you know, a thousand cases that are symptomatic and 25,000 or so a day that are non-symptomatic, um, they're still worried about it spreading like wildfire. 
and uh, causing, well, you know, massive uh, tragedy and death in, in, in the city. Aside from which their vaccination rate in the senior community has been very low, largely because Chinese people, um, because of traditional Chinese medical beliefs, are resistant to vaccination. Well, that is very interesting. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Burton. It's good to speak with you. Thank you very much.